Welcome to the Northampton Commission on Disabilities. Um, this meeting is being audio taped and videotaped. So let's start with introductions. We'll just go around and um, say who we are so we all know who's here. Um, I'm Tori Eklund and I'm the chair of the committee. Let's go this way. And I'm Patty Shaughnessy, the ADA coordinator. City Councilor Mary Ann LaBarge. Benjamin Kalish, reference librarian at Forbes Library. Janet Molding, director at Forbes Library. Lisa Downing, assistant director at Forbes Library. Wow, thank you all. <laughs> Mike Maggie, member of the committee. Uh, Jim Woodson, I'm the uh, disability attorney at Northampton. Okay, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> You're a member of the committee. So before we go to our guest speakers, um, I guess we don't have any members of the public other than guest speakers, so the next item is public comment. So, um, thank you all for coming. I was very excited that when I happened to read in the paper that the Forbes Library had a grant to make the library more accessible because I love reading and I love the idea of having things be more accessible to all. So, um, I really wanted you all to come and I just want to say that we really want to, the Commission on Disabilities wants to support you in any way that we can um, with making things more accessible. If we can give any suggestions, I have loads of suggestions all the time because reading is my favorite pastime. But um, so we just we want to we want to invite you here to say that we really support you in this work, and we'd just love to hear what um, what kinds of things that things that you all are thinking. What kinds of accessibility um, issues you're working on and just to know more about it. So I don't know which one of you wants to um, to talk to us. Well, I will go ahead and, and begin. Um, first of all, thank you so much for this invitation. We were really delighted and pleased um, to be invited um, and to connect with you. And I really appreciate, we all appreciate the, the, the support uh, and the, the things that you've mentioned are, are really encouraging to us and just the kinds of things I was, I was going to ask for at the end, but you made my job really easy. <laughs> uh, so that, that feedback is, is absolutely critical in, in sort of where we are right now. Um, I'll just take a few minutes and introduce the grant, if that's okay? Yes. Okay, so it's a two-year grant. Uh, we were awarded just over $18,000 from the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, which is the library state agency. And they distribute federal funds to different projects. Um, and this one, um, they were very excited to see. Um, the Chickabee Library in Hamden County had been awarded the grant a couple years ago. And they really are looking at libraries um, that, they can, that they're considering regional hubs to, sh to sort of um, not only to attract people from nearby communities, but also to serve as, um, as a go-to resource for library patrons in the surrounding geographic area. So we're, um, we're very honored to have that challenge and, and look forward to living up to it. Um, the, the grant is um, one that the commissioners, um, they have some, like, sort of a menu of choices. And the one reason this one caught our eye is because we realized that um, the library is beautiful and um, we've done many improvements, but there are still areas that make the library inaccessible or difficult to use. Um, partly the physical structure, it's a beautiful 1894 building with very high ceilings and difficult acoustics. Um, there's some difficult navigation uh, within the building, getting to the building and then within the building. And we, as many of you probably know, have just uh, finished fundraising and are in the, the bidding process for a new elevator to replace the lift out front with a fully functional elevator. and. Uh, that, uh, we felt like that sort of laid the groundwork, so now we, we have this easier entry um, that we want to invite people in, and then when they get inside, we want them to experience um, the library um, in an accessible way. Uh, and the role of the library has changed. Um, we just compiled some statistics, and it's interesting, one in ten people now are coming to the library to attend the library program, mm -hmm. which is interesting, all ages, we do programming of all ages, 
And um, in addition, our meeting rooms are used by about 10 to 15 community groups each week. So we have a lot of people coming in and using our spaces. And so one of the, um, one of the main goals, and I'll just kind of go through them, is to make the experience at our programs and in our meeting rooms more enjoyable. Um, one of the ways that we want to achieve this is by um, providing assistive listening devices. They're FM um, systems that are uh, mobile systems that we will offer to patrons that they'll either link into hearing aids or that they will, will offer headsets for people who, whose hearing aids are, or, are, or don't wear hearing aids. That, that could, um, what it does is, it, maybe you already know this, so I apologize if I'm too, be too basic, but the technology is amazing, but it's always a mystery to me, so I'll just go over it quickly. It just, what it does is the speaker will speak into a microphone that will then, the sound will go either right into the hearing aid or to, um, to a headset, and we'll have that available in uh, various um, meetings and even library tours we were thinking that mobile it's mobile enough that people could walk around the person giving the library tour could you could be speaking into this and anyone on the tour could benefit from it uh, we're also talking about some overall improvements to our to our meeting rooms uh, things like um, a brighter projector with a bigger screen so um, so it will be easier to see for all as well as additional speakers in the space right now. They're, especially the community room is the room we're focusing on right now. There's two speakers in front, but we're talking about adding two in the back. So just sort of over, overall um, improvements to the, to the space. Um, we're also talking about other um, changes um, and things that we're going to make available, things like captioning of movies that we'll always ask, things that will sort of change our, our protocol um, ha re requesting that speakers use microphones even for questions and answers with the audience, things just sort of changing our working procedures, mm -hmm. and then also advertising and making available the fact that we can make other accommodations upon requests like sign language interpreters with enough notice um, or and other kinds of um, adaptations. Um, so besides the programming, um, we also um, that, that we already, so, that, so those are improvements that we want to make. We also want to develop programming. That's a segue. So, so we're very interested in hearing suggestions of what would be of particular interest. And I've been um, already c compiling a list. I'm very excited about this. This will happen more in the second year, but one, um, one idea that came forward was accessing e-books and e-audio books for, for low vision or or blind uh, people in our community. The interface now is very difficult. We actually just took a site visit to the Perkins Library in Watertown yesterday, and we're very, we're very impressed with what they offer. Um, and figuring out ways we're now registering as, a, um, as an institution member so we can have a deposit collection available in-house and have the devices to show people, or else if you already are a member, that if your device breaks, you can come in and get a quick replacement. And so we're gonna have that right on hand, which is nice. Um, this is all ages, so um, one of the other ideas that's come forward is sensory integrated story times, which are really great for um, youth on the autism spectrum disorder or other types of, of, um, of issues for youth that will, um, it's, it's sort of some of the, the things that have been happening in our story times now, but just making a more concerted effort to include uh, multiple sensory things that you touch, um, a storyboard that outlines what's going to happen that day, which is helpful for some kids. So that's, that's some of the highlights of the changes to programming. We also wanted to improve the overall experience of people coming in and using the library at our service desks. And a lar large part of that is uh, staff training. And that we've heard this, and I'm sure mm -hmm. uh, that I can, everyone in the room could give, could give me some feedback there. And, and, and we do hope that you will fill out the survey or just come and talk to me. I have my cards here. Um, and we're also looking for members to help serve on, we're going to be doing a panel. Um, so if anyone's interested in serving on that staff training, it would just be a, a morning, that would be wonderful. Um, and, and so really figuring out, to, us being better trained on how to respond to people coming in, um, what are, what, how should we approach them, what kinds of things are helpful um, with, it, with our challenging building. Uh, some of the things that we've already identified are providing like a simple whiteboard so to ease transactions if we're speaking to someone and we're having difficulty having a conversation with them that we could just write down right back and forth. Um, certainly large print versions of forms. Um, one of the other equipment pieces that's in our grant is something that's a, that's a desktop, I always forget the name of it, but it, what it will do is that the staff, we have these very high ceilings and lots of noise around, so if somebody approaches our desk, 
um, and they're, they, they're having trouble hearing, they, the staff member could speak into a microphone that will again go right into their hearing aid and we will also offer a headset um, so that um, they can have a clearer conversation. Um, and then we're also going to be putting a lot of information on our website. We're redoing our overall website and then um, creating a special page that will be easy to find that talks about loot. There's so many things that we can do. Um, or, and that we will be able to do it at, at the end of this grant or that we're open to the idea of, of, of trying to do. And um, you know, we, when we met with the staff originally, the, the big message, the big takeaway message is, you know, to, if somebody asks for something, the, your, your first reaction should not be no, but let's, let's see if we can do that for you. Let's see if we can make that accommodation. And, um, and it's been exciting. I've already had some people come forward as a result of the article in the Con Street Chronicle, which is great. Um, and we're just looking forward to keeping that conversation going. Um, and I guess that's a nice segue into community awareness. So really trying to reach out these type of outreach ref efforts, uh, improving our signage, printed information, um, and then uh, I'm almost done here, but an advisory board. So building that advisory board that will help us consult. And so it's specifically a visit of reviewing the application and we were talking about library signage. So sort of, sort of some working things that we would like feedback from. Um, so that would be a working group, and we are looking for people to serve on that group. So if you're interested, um, that's another way that, that your involvement would be really valued. Um, and then the um, one, one last area I'll talk about is, is the computers. A lot of people come in to use the computers. And um, I think it was actually the training you held here, Patty, with um, talking about um, ADA and, and sort of the, the new compliance as well as just best practices and um, we looked at our public computers and thought what kind of improvements could we make and so we're talking about offering large print keyboard, the track ball mice I think they're called, as well as screen reading software yeah. and um, training and open lab time. So we're having somebody, a gentleman who trains down in Chicopee, oh. uh, we're going to go down and, and meet with him but he's talking about coming up and, and um, offering some training here. Robert Barron. Yes. Yes, I, I trained with him. Oh, great. Excellent. Oh, good. Yeah, everybody raves about him. Yes. So we're, we're actually going to meet him in a couple of weeks. I'm That's looking great. forward to it. Um, but that, sh that should be really good. So those are some of the things that we've already identified, but we're definitely in an information gathering phase. Um, is there anything that I left out that I know? So I guess I'll open it up now for questions or feedback, as I'm certainly... Yes, yes, I do so, have some so, questions. Um, before before um, we start, I, I, I forgot to say at the beginning um, of the meeting that um, I really want to try to implement, um, if you have a question, raise your hand and you'll be called on so that we can make sure that everyone gets their questions. I did have my hand. Yeah. Okay. Why you have you? Sorry. I know you can't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 And so usually I tell to Tori who right. has their hand up. Right. Um, so go, go ahead. Of our okay. okay. Question on the elevator because I know there was a problem there that the bid went out. Naturally, counselors are going to know about what's happening, mm -hmm. and I know Judy and Mike Ryan very, very well. And everybody formed a team and worked very hard to get the money that was needed. Then, apparently, the bid went up much mm -hmm. higher. What was the total amount on that elevator? Well, I I the elevator. Uh, the original estimate was about three hundred thousand dollars, and then we went out to bid in May, and we got two bids back. One was a little over four hundred, and one was well over five hundred thousand dollars. So the architect went back and redid the bid. Not uh, the specifications. Not really redoing what the elevator was going to be, but some some sort of <coughs> ways the contractor could put it together. There was this big metal component that instead of saying that the elevator company had to make it, he said the contractor could get it made any way he wanted it. So that was a way for the contractor to control costs. We also were putting it out to bid in the fall when they <coughs> thought there would be more interest from contractors who would be looking for indoor work in the winter and different things like that. There was some there the idea is to make it look attractive in the beautiful building, so there was some wrought iron work on it. He changed that from custom wrought iron to something that was already produced, yeah. mass produced, uh, which will still look just as good, but um, it's cheaper. And there was some other decorative 
things that he changed to a way that will you know, just make it less expensive. So it is out to bid right now. Uh, the bids will be open tomorrow at 2, so we're all sitting on this to see. We're hoping that it will come in around 400000 And we talked to the Capital Improvement Committee um, a month or so ago and explained the issue to them, and they, I guess as close as they could, promised that they would find the money that was needed to get it done. So and how much do you need? Well, that'll be another hundred thousand if it comes in at four hundred thousand. On um, capital improvements, yeah. on the. I'm not sure exactly how, but Susan Wright was at the meeting and she said that would be that wonderful. Was, oh, because okay. part of the problem oh. is, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Part of the problem is that since last spring, when we went out to bid, we haven't been doing repairs on the lift because mm -hmm. they're very, very expensive, and the lift is just—it's like. The horseless carriage every day something falls off. Yeah. Now, you know, the doors don't work. You, know, yeah. you have to close the door yeah. manually. So of, it's really getting to be a crisis situation. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. On the community room, mm -hmm. okay. now you were saying that they, a parent, do you rent that off? Well, most of the uses are free. The only time we charge is if it's a group that char that's that's charging. So we have a fee structure on our website. I don't know, Patty, if you do the same thing here, but most, you know, 95% of the usage is, is free of yeah. charge. Either library programming or uh, local groups will meet there. Um, all kinds of groups. It's a, it's a Question. Out. Okay, so how many people actually do you accommodate in that community room? The room is, the legal capacity is about 45. And the hours of that community room? There, it's any time the library is open, and we can't open it at a time when the library is closed. We wish we had a nice setup like this. We do have to pay a custodian, so we charge yeah. uh, $50 an hour with a three-hour minimum if, to open it up after okay. they're closed. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so other people, um, so Patty, you yeah. got your hand up, and then I had some comments after Patty. So I just want to be clear about the elevator versus the lift. Are we talking about two different things? Yes, the okay. lift that we have now, this is actually the second lift that has been in there, neither one of them could handle the heavy, constant usage, yeah. heavy as in weight and yeah. usage as in constant. Um, so what we're putting in is a real hydraulic elevator, which will be much easier to operate. You know, it will be the same simple push the button, get in, push the button. Mm -hmm. And But that's why it's so expensive. They have to dig below, they have to cut the granite steps a little bit, the custom-made elevator to fit in this one. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. all of that to go oh. six feet up. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, I, I wanted to make some comments and then Ruth, it'll be your turn. So um, I just want to put in a plug for um, Braille for people who, I, you've said a lot about large print, which mm -hmm. is awesome, but um, I just want to I just want to put in a plug for Braille because for some people, large print isn't an option mm -hmm. um, for at least having some types of materials in Braille. Um, I also want to put in a, a huge plug for audiobooks and for screen reading. Um, JAWS, you may know this already, but uh, JAWS is the most popular screen reader that most blind people um, are able to use. Mm -hmm. So um, That's great. Thank you for that. If I can respond to that comment. Oh, sure. Um, first, on JAWS, JAWS is the screen reader we have selected. We awesome. will have a site license. Good choice. which will allow it to be used on any of the public computers. There won't be a dedicated screen reader computer. You will be able to go to any public computer Fantastic. and use it on that one. There will be a max concurrent use. So I think it's going to be that you can't have JAWS running on more than five computers at a time. That's OK. Hmm. So we don't anticipate that that will ever be a problem. I don't anticipate that either. Um, as for Braille, we have a small Braille collection now. <coughs> it is housed in our children's department, and it that. is, I want to say, exclusively children's mm -hmm. materials mm -hmm. at this point. Maybe some young adults, but yeah, not um, I think adults. they have a wrinkle in time, so I guess that comes with young adult. <laughs> um, it gets a fair amount of traffic through our interlibrary loan. Mm -hmm. To my knowledge, we've never had someone request that we actually place it directly in their hands mm -hmm. um, coming into the library looking for these materials. Um, it is certainly a collection we have budgeted in, in the grant 
to purchase more accessible materials. We haven't yet decided how, which materials we're going to purchase. Mm. But in conjunction with our survey that we're doing for the community, talking with the advisory board, mm -hmm. we're going to have to decide how are we going to spend that money, what materials are going to be used and will be continued to those collections to grow, and certainly the Braille collection is one that could grow. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, there also is something, um, I don't know if you're aware of Bookshare? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. So I don't know exactly how that would work. Basically, um, a membership for a year is like $50, and if you purchase a membership yourself, then you can download as many books as you want. So um, a thought that I had had was that if the library wanted to have a Bookshare membership for people to use, it could be limited, like because it's not your own, and maybe people could be able to download a certain amount of, of books per month or something like that. But I, Bookshare is also a really valuable resource. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I don't think, a roof we never got to. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> yeah. so, a couple of things. Um, the people at the desk need to be trained about the alarm button in the elevator. Mm -hmm. I've been stuck in it at least three times. Um, you push the button, you push the button, finally people walking up the stairs will go up and ask for help. I have to say, part of the wow. maintenance problem is that alarm often doesn't work. Oh, nice. I didn't know that. The door didn't work. Sorry. <laughs> Um, and I believe, don't you train for the okay. e-books? I, I do e-book training. I have not yet done any book share training. It is very new that we've had any association with book share. I only timed out about it. I originally am pretty sure trained with you mm -hmm. back away. And now I teach here and I work with seniors with overdrive and, and uh, audio books and ebooks and everybody loves it but they put the new page in there now where you get all the manuals before you can get in. It's driving everybody nuts. Mm. Am I wrong? We should talk about that later. I'm not familiar with the page you're talking about but it sounds like something I need to know about. Oh, okay. So That's interesting. Yeah. So Marianne, you're next and then Jim. Okay. I am very pleased to hear about people with who are deaf, which I am completely on my right ear, and the hearing aids and the amplifiers. Very, very happy to hear about that. I have several people throughout the city and even on my ward who will be very happy to hear about this system coming in. Very, very valuable. And if there's anything that I can do as a city councilor, please come to me. Okay, I talk with Russ and Mm -hmm. Margie Hess and them, be glad to help you. Thank you. Um, Jim? Okay, just, um, I, I don't know if this can be addressed, but just physically, people coming into the library, I've heard people say, as you know, the, the doors, mm -hmm. just, um, mm -hmm. the, the, there's no other way to say it, they're very, very heavy doors. Yeah, they are. And I've seen people struggle, I've helped people, oh, and you don't really even have to have a, a physical disability, just to have difficulty entering. Is there a reason I, that um, set up? Well, the reason was um, it was architectural mistake when he designed that. <laughs> mm. But the good news is, well, of course, we did take out the, the partition by, in front of the elevator. So if you step to the left, mm -hmm. there's, you can go through the automatic door okay. that's in front of the lift. But as part of this elevator project, they're going to replace those doors. Okay. That's, we made sure that that was going to happen because they're ridiculous. They mm -hmm. have, yeah. Mike, maybe? Yeah, I just wanted to find out a little bit more about is this elevator going to go where the lift is now? Yes, yes, okay. that's the only place we could put it. And I hope it's going to be a little bigger. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a custom made elevator, but it is um, it's up to code. Of course, it will be up to code. And the reason they have to cut the granite steps a bit is that it's going to be. And also the way, instead of the doors coming towards you, it's going to be the doors will slide like a yeah. traditional elevator, which I think will really help with the navigation as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah I have a terrible time oh. trying to get into yeah. that place. Yeah. Does anyone else have a question? Just have one comment. Oh, Patty? I don't have a um, question, but um, I just want to say thank you as the uh, director for the Council on Aging that you had an anonymous, anonymous donor um, so that the uh, 
outreach program, delivering books could still happen. So thank, that's wonderful to the yeah. anonymous donor and to uh, Forbes for continuing that program. And we agree. And I, I, I want to thank you for the work on the accessibility. I was very excited to hear about that and um, would be really happy to support the work in any way by giving ideas. And Great. Excellent. Yeah. Please. Yes. So we hope you've all filled out the survey. And Mike, you have a final comment? Uh, yeah, I just wondered when is this going to be available, the elevator? Uh, well, um, it's. If all goes according to plan, at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, but the start date is December 15th. They're supposed to finish by June 1st. So right. that's the plan. We hope. I'll hope that goes well. It's amazing what that cost is on that yes. elevator. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. I've yeah. never yeah. heard of it costing that much. No, we yeah. it's, it's astounding. We keep saying you could buy a house. Yeah. 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 All yeah. You buy a house you and you buy maybe to. two houses. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you all for coming. Great. Well, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, thank you. We'll be in touch. I'll just leave maybe a couple of my cards. Is that yeah. okay? Yeah. So please, yeah. Arjun is coming on the advisory board. Um, I believe one of you here. And also, if anybody wants to complete the surveys, we have them out with funds. Oh, great. So I can get those. Okay. And we also, we want to, we'll pass around, this is called a library snapshot. It's a, have Infogram? What's it called? Um, some people call this an infographic. Infographic that Ben designed and made. It's just statistics of what happens in one day in Forbes Library. So we'll pass those around. And we also have um, the calendar of events of things this that happen. One month, you know, just this month events at the library just so you can get an idea of how much is going on. Yeah. And an important thing to note about that calendar of events, and unfortunately a frequent source of confusion, is that it is highlights. That is probably 5% of the events happening at the library. If we were to print every single event, it would be many, many, many pages right. long. So. There's lots going on, and we really want everyone to be able to participate. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you for inviting. Yes, thank you so much for coming, all of you. Yes. Can I write it down? Committee voted to meet, and it would be that you uh, meetings would be canceled in if the weather was inclement, rather than knowing in January, February there was no meeting. So it's just back on the agenda as a point of discussion. If you want to keep it, that we have our meeting scheduled for January and February, and if they have to get canceled, they get canceled, which, which I will say did happen right last year. I would like I would I would like to speak to that. I'm raising my own hand. Just um, I, I, <laughs> my, my opinion is that I would prefer to have the meetings scheduled and then cancel them if need be because it feels like a really long time to go from December to March with no contact. And while that may happen anyway because of the weather, it may not. And I would rather the flow and get the work going if at all possible. That's my opinion. If anyone else wants to make any comment, um, are we taking another note? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice Thanksgiving and Christmas. Okay, so um, are we, does anyone have any other comments about the January <coughs> um, No, I haven't even heard yeah. your child. Okay, yeah. so I'll, I'll say it again. So um, I was saying that my opinion, my, my opinion is that my, my preference would be to keep the 
the meetings in January and February schedule, understanding that we will cancel them if there's bad weather. Um, it feels December to March feels like a long time to go without having meetings scheduled, and while they may be canceled, they may not, and it would be my personal preference to keep the flow going. Um, any other comments people want to make before we make a motion? Yeah, I, I, okay, go ahead. Um, I agree, I think that there might be issues coming up in Yeah, I just wanted if we had um, a discussion, I, I mean, are we talking about that if on the third Tuesday of the month it's inclement weather, we cancel. the whole, so that month is canceled? Correct. Okay. Yes, Paul. Which I think is how it was handled um, before. That the meeting was scheduled, and then if the weather was bad, the meeting was canceled. You know, looking at safety and how things are either shoveled or not shoveled. Right, Councilor. Okay, my question to you, Tom. Okay, when you say inclement, I want you to explain that to me. We have people that are in crutches, we have people in wheelchairs, you do get a ride here, I get a ride here. Yep. When you say inclement, what are you talking about? Um, are you talking about inclement when everything is canceled? When everything is canceled or when it's deemed to be unsafe, when there's okay. snow. Who is going to make the determination of what is safe and what is not? Well, in the past, um, Patty, you have, if the senior centers close, then certainly we would cancel. Um, I would be happy to make that assessment and participate in that as well. Um, I mean, certainly we don't want anyone to be in jeopardy. And, and of course, even if we do meet, if anyone feels that it's unsafe for them, they certainly can not I hope so. Of yeah. course, absolutely. Jim? Jim? Yeah, and um, would we have a, and I apologize if you covered this when I was speaking to them, would there be a cutoff on the, what, when a decision would have to be made given that you know, we're here at five, or we would just be playing by ear if the weather was bad? Um, that's a good question. Okay, I, okay Patty. Um, so what has been done in the past, <clears throat> um, by 7.30 I make a decision about the senior center programming, and um, if the senior center is totally closed, that's up to the city, the mayor would call that. So if the city's closed, so would the senior center in any meeting or program that right. is going to happen here. But I usually, for uh, COD, would do it in the morning um, so that people could plan accordingly, because I know many people have to get um, transportation um, mm -hmm. through PDTA. Right. Plus another factor, too. It's not snowing in the morning. All of a sudden, right. it starts right. in right. the afternoon, right. mm -hmm. which us counselors have had hearings and so yeah. forth. And I worked very closely with the police department, making a decision of you know canceling those hearings. And the police department was excellent about it. And they would say, mm -hmm. counselor, you don't want anybody on the roads. So well, certainly, if that happened, we would cancel later in the day. I mean, I would certainly say that you're right. That if that were to happen, we wouldn't say, "Oh, too bad, we didn't decide in the morning, so you have to come." We would certainly be wanting to have safety be the most important, and you know that safety is paramount. So we and, and another thing we just did as counselors, especially, which is a very very busy commission, mm -hmm. which is social services, veterans, yes. and culture and recreation. Mm -hmm. Because schools are closed that mm -hmm. whole week, we have counselors who have small children. Yep. We have canceled our meeting for the month of February, mm -hmm. so families can be with their children and so forth. Sometimes you have to make decisions mm -hmm. that accommodate right. people. So I don't think we have anyone on this commission in that situation. But, but what I'm saying as a counselor is that I want everybody to make that decision themselves 
if they feel you're going to be safe. Absolutely. I completely concur with that. So, um, shall we vote on this? Yes. Who would like to make a, a motion? Ruth, did you say something? Did you say you wanted to make a motion? Just that we needed a motion before we vote. Yes, she did. Oh, yes. Who would like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Thank you. Which is, how do you want to word it? How do you want to word the motion? I'll make a motion that we have the meeting scheduled for the months of January and February with the understanding if it's inclement weather, both either in the morning or in the afternoon, that this commission would be notified at an appropriate time of cancellation. Perfect. Second? Anyone want to second? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Just, and just a clarification. Yep. Um, the notification would, so would be an email from Patty? It has been both an email and a phone call. Okay. Yeah. As long as Plus I have it's a phone number. And, uh, and actually, this is that's a very good point, um, Councillor. That we also put information, though I can't say I do it for Commission on Disability, but it t talks about the senior center. You know, like if it's canceled or delayed opening or any of that stuff. Um, but I could do it for Commission on Disability as well. That would be helpful. You're in it. Yeah, and we also could. Go ahead and put it on the radio. Okay. That yep. would be great. That would be that would be great too. The more um, the more mediums of communication, the better. Okay. Uh, this is notification that the city is closed or that this commission on disability. Exactly. It's from a state specific. Yes. So it would be specific to commission. Yeah. Yeah. So I have to get um, all the codes now for commission on disability. Yeah. Okay. So um, great. Thank you all. So the next item on the agenda is discussion on persons being removed from their homes. And Hannah, that's your item. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I have a concern for people in this city. Um, it has happened um, repeatedly to certain people. And um, there is something that I would like to um, work on preventing uh, for people in the future. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, um, people uh, have sometimes made phone calls to emergency people unnecessarily, unneeded calls, um, unneeded calls to ambulance workers, unneeded calls to the police. And um, I was talking with Patty recently on how we probably how we could positively work on on this. Um, so, in the future, um, only calls that are made will be necessary calls for people who have an actual medical item, um, and that people with disability are not singled out and discriminated against, and. Um, have somebody fraudulently call the police or an ambulance and have them removed from their homes. Um, Excuse me here. Mm -hmm. Clarification. Mm -hmm. When you're saying medically disabled, right, and being removed from their home, can you give me some language on that? Um, well, there's been times when Somebody, um, like say, somebody in the community will make a call and it will be, um, they will make a fraudulent statement about a neighbor. Um, a label? A neighbor. A neighbor. A neighbor. A neighbor. Okay. And make a fraudulent statement about a neighbor and um, an ambulance has often been called and literally removed the person from their home. And it's, um, it's just something that I feel that people should not be singled out and discriminated against. And it's kind of um, a little bit of maybe red tape that needs to be worked out because if there's somebody making a call with false information about somebody to an ambulance worker or the police, 
that's something I feel that needs to be worked on before the person gets removed from the home and taken to a medical facility. Um, this, so, um, Patty had mentioned that perhaps we can um, invite someone from, um, say, perhaps the dispatch. dispatch. Dispatch, that's right. Someone from dispatch. I feel that's very important. If we could invite someone from dispatch, um, possibly someone from the police station, um, to talk to them about this. I feel that there could be a position created in the city where if people possibly need some sort of medical care, um, they could go to a health care counselor instead of being taken all the way to a hospital. You know, maybe there's only some minor things that need to be worked on, and that could be worked on with a counselor. Um, some kind of free hospital liaison that needs to be created. Um, so I really, I really feel that like this needs to be worked on. Question, how many incidences have occurred in this? Um, let's see, there's been, there's been a few. There's been a few and it's been wow. repeated. Okay, my question and what I'm suggesting, and I would be glad to give um, Fire Chief Brian Duggan a call to see if I can invite him to the next meeting. Also, I would call the police department to see if I could get either Captain Jody Casper to come, one of them, okay, to attend our next meeting also. And um, I'm trying to think, probably somebody from dispatch. I'm not going to guarantee that because with the fire chief and probably the ambulance department, the chief will designate somebody from that department and we have a round table and talk about these incidences. Thank you. That would be really helpful and we can certainly do that at the next meeting. And Patty, you had, yeah, I just wanted to say that um, my suggestion about dispatch is that there is um, a protocol on how all these um, situations when you know police fire ambulance go to a home which i don't know what that protocol is so i think that would be a good a uh, first step to, under, to understand that all right and that would be up from to the capital fire chief ryan duggan who he'll designate for that and also somebody from the ambulance department mm -hmm. from the fire department and from the police department Excellent. Thank you. So our next step with this. So I'm um, hopefully I'm not going to guarantee it's going to be for next month. Okay. That's up to the departments because of their scheduling and so yeah, forth. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. And also keep in mind if there's emergencies, the emergency is going to come first. If they're here, they're gone. Absolutely. That that's totally understandable. But thank you for um, assisting. With what that. I'd like you to do, Tori, mm -hmm. if you could email me the concerns. Or Ruth, maybe you could possibly do that. It would probably be easier tomorrow or tonight. Could you email me exactly what she was talking about? Or maybe Hannah. I can try, but I'm not sure I understand. Maybe, so. maybe, the, maybe it would be best for Hannah to email you. Hannah, can you email um, City Council of Art? I couldn't. Patty, why don't you do it? Oh. Okay. What, what am I doing? My life easier. So when I call these departments, I need to say what, the what Hannah's concerns are and what's happened. Because mm -hmm. I agree with Ruth. I'm a little confused here on which way to go. Yeah, so am I. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Um, the next agenda item is update on ramps for downtown Northampton. Michael Nagy for game. Um. Not really much to update. Um, I mean, I'm trying to contact the Architectural Access Board to see what their take is. But, and we just have to see. Um, Patty, you want to yeah. say something? So if, if you get in touch with somebody at the um, AAB, 
and we, you know, and they want to come out here, which would be great. You know, we can set up a meeting to have it here, Michael. Mm -hmm. You know, beyond um, our commission meeting, mm -hmm. because and I'm sure people would um, enjoy coming to hear more from them. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah. they seem to have the answers to many things. Thank you. Yeah. Miriam. Oh, Miriam. Right. And we also got that email that you sent. Councilor Bill Dwight, and he replied back to you, uh, notifying both Patty and I, Councilor LaBarge and Pat Shaughnessy, and Patty did reply back to him in regards of our last meeting that we had with um, the building inspector, and maybe Patty, if you'd like to, um, you could read this off. Or if not, unless you want me to read it off, of our reply back oh, to Bill. Yeah, you can. You have it in your hand. Do you, you want can, me to do yeah, it? Go ahead. Sure. Do you yeah. It, no, you can. Um, so, can I just do, sort of go yes. backwards Here. about um, Michael sent <coughs> Bill Dwight and the mayor um, an email yeah. about um, you know what's happening with the whole uh, ramp thing. Mm -hmm. um, so. Well, I'm just sending the proposal. So and, and I. Sent back a response to Bill, um, Councillor Dwight, the mayor, um, Tori. I sent you an email, and mm -hmm. I also oh, yeah. to Mike. To, um, so, dear Bill, thank you for sending me the newest portable ramp proposal from Mr. Uh, Michael Nagy, and I would like to bring it up to date as to what has transpired thus far in pursuit of the topic. I placed the topic of the portable ramps on the agenda October 21st, um, Commission on Disability meeting. I invited Mr. Louis Hasbrook building commissioner to the meeting to share his knowledge and if uh, such an opportunity could be provided in Northampton based on building codes, ADA, disability, <coughs> etc. After some discussion at the Commission on Disability with Mr. Nagy um, serving as one of the members, I suggested that a subcommittee be established in pursuit of that topic by gathering information. Portable ramps are a very complex and detailed subject and with the establishment of a subcommittee, they could gather the needed information and then report back to the full COD membership. Mr. Nagy and um, Ms. Coyle, both COD members, volunteered to serve on the subcommittee. Yes. I suggested that members of Mr. Nagy's group GAIN also be involved. Uh, COD would welcome having GAIN members involved, GAIN, not GAIN, GAIN members involved, but ask them the question at the COD meeting. We don't know who they are other than Mr. Nagy. We hope that they do become very involved in this cause. Uh, Mr. Hasbrook suggested that contact be made with the Architectural Access Board as they may <clears throat> even send a representative out here to review the topic of the ramps. And it was suggested to Mr. Nagy that he speak with the police chief regarding the storage and distribution of the ramps. Mm -hmm. um, on the COD agenda meeting today, Portable Ramps would, will have a report by Mr. Nagy, I believe. <clears throat> After Mr. Navy's report, the COD will have additional information to present to you. At some point in the near future, <clears throat> I am sure that the subcommittee will have a report to present to COD. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. So, can I just ask one? So, if, if you, if like your subcommittee, Hannah and Michael, and I point to you because you are the two that I know are on it. If you have a meeting and you want to have it here, you know, I think I would welcome the opportunity to be part of it. Um, and I don't want to say I'm going to be a member of your COD, but I'd like to help um, so we can pursue uh, getting some ramps if that's feasible. That's great. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. The next agenda item is mine. Um, telephone reassurance program. And I just... Oh, um, Jim just left. Oh, okay. Um, I... This came up because I was talking with a person that has um, several disabilities. Um, she's visually impaired. She also has um, um, mobility. She also has um, a physical disability. She lives alone. She lives in another state, and she um, has a lot of balance issues and is concerned about falling. So she has a service where um, the police call her twice a day to check and make sure that she's okay. And if she doesn't respond within 20 minutes, they send someone to check on her. And it just occurred to me that that might possibly be something that might benefit people um, in our area. And I was just, I just wanted
wanted to bring it up and see if that was something that other members of the commission thought that it might be might be worthwhile to perhaps have a conversation with the police to see if they could do. It was just just an idea that I had. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Would this only be for hometown people? Because people leave mm -hmm. and go out and do things, go to the doctor, and even if you're hometown, do you occasionally go out? So if they tried to call, mm -hmm. it would involve keeping yeah. records of who called and said they were gone, who's home, mm -hmm. you know. Hi. Yeah. Um, we, through Triad in Northampton, um, initiated a similar program to this where volunteers were calling um, seniors and eventually there was really no um, senior who wanted to be uh, called but if if it was in, in many communities it is through the police department that wasn't happening in Northampton doesn't mean that that couldn't be addressed again with um, the Northampton Police Department but it was that every day at a certain time um, the senior could expect a phone call so let's say the call was coming in at nine o'clock that they should be home at 9 o'clock, and if not, then um, a well-being check was um, made by the police because we would call to say that there was, um, you know, no answer. That's through triad? Yeah, triad is one of the safety things for seniors. So then we have something in place. It, it's no longer in existence. We don't have it anymore. There were no participants at one point, so we, we stopped doing it. I just thought it might be something that some people might want. So it's just a, a thought. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe now with the um, um, the way we the city has the um, availability to call households, that there could be like a robo call, because um, that is how a lot of communities do it with the police department. I could I give you a suggestion? Yes, please. Once um, I call the police department, the fire chief, and that to see if I can get them to come in for December. Why don't you talk about that, Tori? That is um, an example of great minds think alike because I was thinking the same thing. That's that was that's perfect. That's what we'll do. Ruth, thank you, Ruth. Um, I just have something along the same lines that I think might work a little bit better. You know the push buttons that people wear. Yeah. The new ones can be the alert. Worn, they can be worn anywhere. The new ones work by satellite, so you can be six states away. Mm -hmm. And it was oh. still a one for my mom. If there's true. a way that they could be worked out to be low cost or for certain, if you meet certain criteria, then you could get one at no cost, maybe just like the three <coughs> doctors or, you know, local, maybe the low cost health care can cover them. Or we, maybe we can research into that. Then it wouldn't tie up anybody. You wouldn't have to have somebody or the calls being made. Mm -hmm. And if somebody calls the way hers work, you give them a list of people, mm -hmm. and when the alarm goes off, they make sure you're all right, and then they call everybody on the list, which means we all get phone calls, mm -hmm. two times a day at least, <laughs> um, that ask if she's okay. And there's a, um, a, like a box that comes with it, and when she goes to bed at night, she's required to push the button, just to let them know that she's at home and she's going to bed. That's great. And they, they really work great now. They're so much better than they used to be. So the nickname for this, the program that most communities have, it's called Are You OK? Mm -hmm. yeah. R and then a U and O and a K. Are you OK? Oh, but that's just another way you might go instead of something else to think about. Thank you. Mike? Yeah, I was just curious about, um, I mean, if so if you go out, does that mean you have to call the police station to let them know? Or they could call your cell phone. You're going most out. Most people have a cell phone. Yeah, well, I do. Well, I was going to say when this when we had the program, cell phones were not, we're not. a real big thing. Yeah. yeah. Plus, we were doing nine one one cell phones too, so kind of mm -hmm. corresponded. But you could only use a cell phone for nine one one calls. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, I'm just unclear about exactly how many calls we're making back and forth. I know. I it, it, was, it would be that like, somebody. Okay. I'll use our situation. The volunteer at 10 o'clock would call the senior, and the senior would answer the phone, and you would know that that person was okay. And then the thing would, the same thing would happen the next day and the next day every single day, except it didn't happen on weekends. Just to check Patty if that person was okay. Yeah, just to make sure that they're okay. And a lot of people don't have contact with other people um, because they're homebound and they're. Mm -hmm. 
and it becomes a social thing as well. And not that everybody has the time to, you know, talk for 20 minutes, but a lot of people it was a, a good method yeah. for socialization as well. Now, being the director of the senior center, and you abolish that program, whatever has happened to it, mm -hmm. has it been brought up at your board of trustees meetings? No, we didn't abolish it. It just um, evaporated because we had no participants. So right now there's. Is, when, when, excuse it, me. Yeah. What do you mean by no participant? We sent out news. No one signed up. News. Um, um, Publicity releases, we had um, meetings at different groups, and um, we had no participants. And mm -hmm. this was something we did through triad. Wow. Yeah. I and think it's worth revisiting. I do. I think we might want to try to revisit it. I think somehow. what Patty suggested about the robot calling is another good way of doing it. Yeah. I just had the fire department about a year ago on a resident of mine on Lawville Road. Mm -hmm. talking with the families and that, because she was in her late 80s, lives by herself, mm -hmm. and like Liz was saying, the fire department helped the family making sure that she had an excellent setup. Mm -hmm. So if she needed to call them, she just needed to press that button. It's a really good system. So I think that the idea of bringing it up um, hopefully next month when people come is a great idea, and I would definitely like to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. The next agenda item, purchase of two benches for Florence, mayoral order at City Council, November 6th, first reading, and that's your agenda item, Marianne. Patty, you didn't bring any pictures, right? Well, I just wanted to let yeah. all the commissioners know that at our last meeting, I would know what the benches looked like, and we're approving on a financial report of 3,000, 3,500, I think it is, we got 120 pages going off yes, this week at City oh, Council. Anyways, that's great. The mayor came to City Council. I explained to the councilors about exactly about the public hearings that we have had on vibrant sidewalks, okay, which has nothing to do with this commission, but the benches flowed right into all this. Mm -hmm. And we had excellent responses. I think the only two that showed up was Patty and Ruth at, at the hearings, at both of the hearings. Yeah. Yeah, and I want to thank you for that because the visibility was extremely thank important. You. Yeah. Anyways, well, we, are very we are getting the benches. That's very good news. We're very it's happy. It's been approved. I've had the Human Rights Commission, the chair, who's attended both of the hearings, also came to City Council two weeks ago in favor of councilors approving the amount of money coming out of the Commission on Disabilities Excellent. funds. Okay. Mm -hmm. She is coming back again on this Thursday on the second reading. Mm -hmm. I have, as a city councilor, requested our council clerk, to, and she did, she did a beautiful job. She has all the pictures of the benches for every counselor to see exactly what they look like, and they are beautiful. Fantastic. That's excellent. Thank you. I did um, bring a copy of the benches, so it's getting passed around. I can send you the um, link so that you can, um, well, I don't know, you won't be able to. Um, Is there any check audio? It out? Any no, there isn't. <laughs> well, you know what? Send it to me anyway, because I might want to show it to other people. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. I might also, to too, I want to finish off. I had invited um, Civil Rights Liberty Attorney Bill Newman to our hearing up in Florence. And um, he was there, came, because I had invited him. I saw him last Thursday and District Attorney Dave Sullivan at the Garden House and they commended me for really working hard to push those benches because we really had a little struggle there. But we opened the doors, it's gonna happen. Well, that's a very good thing. Thank you very much. I think it is too. Do we have um, announcements for other business? I, I just wanted yes. to mention one thing yep. about the benches that yep. there's gonna be plaques put on it and okay. we need to know what 
complex should say. I think I like that. Yeah, I had I had thought maybe a gift of that's a Northampton right. yeah. Commission on Disability. Yeah. So a gift from yeah. the Northampton Commission on Disability? Yeah. Yeah. A gift from. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a gift from. I like that. I think that. Isn't that, that that's elegant? Yeah. That's lovely. Yeah. A gift from the, the Northampton Commission on Disability. Um, so because uh, these are um, bronze, and I'm going to assume we can ask the DPW to attach them. Um, but you need to vote because I have to go to city council to ask for funding for these. Um, these um, so we need to vote on what? Well, what? I think you need to vote that um, money can it be expended for plaques for each of the benches. Okay. I make a motion that we um, appropriate however much. Do you How much is that? Yeah. There, the, the price is all over the place. So I would say if you could just vote that two plaques could be. Um, Purchased and they're like this is where what they're going to be not big plaques like this because yeah. it fits on one of the rungs of the um, the bedrooms. The okay. Bench. So Ruth, Ruth made a motion that two two plaques be purchased uh, to go one on each bench. And and we have with a there is not a cost yet. <coughs> right. With with the price to be determined. Yes. And does do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Great. Okay. Um, do we have announcements or other business? Yes. Yes, that's under other. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yes, I that did not get put on the agenda. My apologies. So, um, if we could have a motion to approve the minutes of the October twenty-first. Move to approve. Yeah. Second. All, all in favor? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion to adjourn. <coughs> okay. <coughs>